Most of you suck at making games look good. Code isn't everything, guys. What did he say? All your crazy cool systems and features don't mean sh if people are instantly disappointed with how your game looks. Huh? But with these four steps, you can give your game a unique look, no matter what kind of models or art you are using. To properly showcase the upcoming tips, I made this scene out of the simplest shapes in Unreal Engine. I think you'll agree that it's definitely nothing to brag home about, but you just wait and see how this scene will evolve into something quite pretty. Now, the absolute first step is to rethink how you use colors in your game. I'm not super knowledgeable about color theory, but the rule I always apply to my games is to have two to three dominant colors that fit together. In this case, we have green, brown, and blue in the background, and the rest is either a white color or a slight variation of your main colors like a lighter brown or a darker green. Obviously, this shouldn't be an unbreakable rule. A lot of games require multiple different colors, but even then you should have a few dominant colors to make the scene less chaotic and busy. Another tip I can give you here is to also choose an additional color that heavily contrasts next to your other colors to make your players naturally attracted to certain objects. For example, in our scene, we can have a bright red object on the floor, which will automatically get our attention because it's the only object with that color in this scene. Just keep in mind that this only works if this is the rarest color in your game. So now we have our colors. Let's move on to the next step. Lighting and glow. Adjusting and adding lights in key areas can really improve your game's look. But it's not only about brightening up your scene, it's also about adding shadows and darkness in the right places. Nothing looks better than a dark environment with well-placed lights. With our game scene here, I decided I wanted to have a soft shadow on the side and added a little light inside our dark house. Now another easy way to enhance the look of most games is by making stuff glow. It sounds stupid, but shiny and glowy stuff just looks cool. I actually discovered this in my very first game jam. I had very little experience in game development and decided to only use the most basic shapes to make a game. And just by adding a glow to the different shapes, I gave my game a very unique and appealing look. A happy discovery that even to this day I still apply to a lot of my games. Although when it comes to our scene here, I'm not going to make anything glow because in this case, I don't think it fits. Hey, real quick, if you're looking for a tool that lets you create 3D models the easiest way possible, then consider looking into our tool called Sloyd. It lets you create and customize assets the same way you'd create a character in an RPG like, for example, Skyrim. It's easy, fast, flexible, and optimized, and it even has this cool randomization feature for when you're not exactly sure what you want. So yeah, check it out with the link in the description. With the third step, we're going to explore post-processing effects. Now, I know this seems a bit obvious, but bear with me because most of you still completely underutilize this insane visual tool. Before we jump into this, I want to point out that mastering post-processing stuff is an entire job in itself. And I'm not going to pretend that I know how to do all the fancy stuff. However, I can teach you a few simple tweaks that I picked up and used to make my game stand out. First off, we have saturation and contrast. Tweaking these two settings will already change your game significantly. For example, if you're making a game that has a lot of natural elements and vibrant colors, you should try to slightly increase the saturation and contrast. This will make all the important colors pop even more and give your game this vibrant aesthetic. It's what I did for my survival game prototype I worked on a year ago, and I think the views I got on my video are mainly thanks to this hyper-saturated environment and thumbnail. Now, I'm not saying that you should just go ahead and crank up the saturation and contrast levels of your game, in some cases it might actually look better to do the opposite. Giving your game a desaturated look might help in making your environment feel less welcoming, more depressing and hostile. Basically, just tweak those settings slightly and make it fit your game. The second setting we are going to look at is the temperature setting. This is a simple and ideal way to give your scene a warm or cold touch. This again will depend on your setting, but in this case, I think the scene should have a slight warm tropical touch. Now let's move on to depth of field. Depth of field is one of my favorite settings. It makes things look blurry in the background, but makes things close up look more crisp and focused. A perfect example of this practice is Octopath Travelers. The depth of field here really makes the game stand out and unique. Let's apply it to our scene. The final post-processing option is slightly more complicated and that is applying a post-processing material. Huh? 
This could be a tune shader, an outline shader, a mix of both, or any other cool visual altering shader. You can find loads of tutorials online on how to create these shaders, and I've even linked in the description the tutorials of the two shaders I used in this scene. Now, if you want to skip the process of making these yourself, you can buy them in the asset store. Okay, let's move on to the last step. This last step is a very easy change that can significantly improve the look of your game, and that is simply by having a matching skybox. For those that don't know, a skybox is basically a huge inverted sphere with a texture applied to it. For our scene, I'm using this free anime skybox I found on Sketchfab. And that's basically the last piece of our puzzle. 